Hello everyone, Lizelle Crowley here at the Cool Tool Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to work with a couple of different textures and an antique mold to make a very cool dragon pendant. Okay, so these are the tools we're going to need to make this um, pendant. We're going to want a, a mold for dome shapes, and I like this little paint palette that Cool Tool sells. It works perfectly for this. We're going to be using FS999 Fine Silver Clay. Um, probably going to take about 12 to 15 grams of clay for this. We're going to use this lovely template. I love this shape. You can make this pendant in any shape you like. This is the shape I'm going to use today. There's many great options to choose from. We're also going to use an antique mold. This is the Celtic Dragon Mold. And again, there's so many different molds to choose from. You can mix and match for this pendant any way you'd like. This is an acrylic hand roller and it makes a really deep, really precise texture. This particular one is pebbles, but they also come in a variety of um, textures, and you're going to love working with them. We're going to use the new easy release texture for the back of the piece, and again, there's many, many options. I really like this one for what we're going to do because it fits the shape that I'm doing very well. Obviously, you want a work surface. I'm going to use the clay board, which I love because it has four non-stick feet that allows me to have a nice stable level surface no matter where I'm working. We want tough cards and frames, clay roller, coil roller, clay pick, cutter scraper, brush and water, and cool slip for lubricant. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is use this um, antique mold to create the central motif for the pendant. Now this mold um, is kind of deep and it has kind of a concave surface. So I don't want to have it be flat backed. I want it to be concave on the back. So we're going to take a ball of clay and roll it into a ball. And I'm going to use the coil roller because I don't want to handle it too much with my fingers because that can pull the moisture out of the clay. And I'm making the ball um, so it, it, I would say you want it to really fill up the mold without overlapping too much. So that's a good proportion of clay to mold right there. Now, I don't need to lubricate the mold because it's made out of silicone and the clay isn't going to stick to it. But I do want to lubricate my paint palette. And what I'm going to do, first I'm going to slightly flatten it with my coil roller just to get it stabilized in there. And now I'm going to come in with my paint palette, which has just the right curve, and I'm going to press that down. And that's going to dome the inside of that um, motif that I'm creating. Okay? Now I am actually going to dry this in the mold so that when I unmold it, there's no risk of me um, ruining the um, impression that I've made. So this whole thing will be set aside to dry, and I will have to do some trimming and sanding after it's dry, but I'll have a nice deep impression and I'll have a nice um, curved surface. So we'll set that aside to dry and we'll do the next step. Okay, so for the back piece, I'm going to texture both sides, and I love this, these new, Cool Tools has come out with a whole series of these, they're called Easy Release Textures. And I love working with them because they give a nice crisp image and the clay comes away so smoothly. And I really like this one for this project because this is the shape I'm going to use and the, um, the design fits the shape beautifully. So this is going to be the back of the piece and the front of the piece is going to be made with this acrylic clay roller, the pebbles design. And um, I love this with the dragon because it looks like a castle or cobblestones or something that you would see around a dragon. So the first thing I want to do is lubricate my texture. And for these easy release textures, I just do a light misting. You don't need a lot of lube. And that's another advantage because the less lube you use, the less likely you are to contaminate your clay. For the acrylic roller, I'm just going to roll a little lube on my work surface and rub it on with my fingers. These also do not need a lot of lubricant, but I don't recommend using it without any lubricant. So because we're texturing both sides and the top texture is fairly deep, I'm actually going to um, roll out my initial slab 
to five cards thick rather than four cards thick. And again, I have to keep it fit relatively narrow to accommodate the rolling pin. So I'm going to take my five card frame and I need it wide enough so that it's going to, um, I'm going to be able to cut my shape out. But again, I don't want it too wide. Just going to get a little more width on this. Okay. And now I'm going to take my lubricated texture, lay my clay upon it, put my frames on either side. And I've also discovered when I use these rollers, if I start off the edge, sometimes the clay will um, rotate around the roller. If I start just a little bit in from the edge, that won't happen. So I'm starting just to scotch in and I'm going to roll all the way down the length of my clay. Look at how cool that texture is. It looks just like cobblestones. I absolutely love it. And also look at how nice the texture came out on the back. Now because the back of the piece has a very specific design to it, I'm actually going to have that face up when I cut it out. And I'm going to come in with my uh, template and just cut it out. Pull that away. And now I'm just going to use another tough card to flip this over. And that's the front of the piece. So this is going to dry. I'm going to sand the edges. I'm going to take the dragon that I molded earlier. Once it's dry, sand the edges of that attach this to this, and then put a frame around it. So here we have our two pieces. Um, this is the mold. It's been dried. And this is the um, back piece. And again, it's got a texture on both sides. First thing I'm going to do is sand the mold. And I want to get it um, with a nice frame to it, a nice edge to it. So I'm going to sand very carefully, and I'm going to rotate my sanding pad so that I'm rounding that edge, but I want to keep the frame. The, um, the mold has a built-in frame on it, and I want to maintain that frame as I sand. I don't want to lose any of it. And I like sanding pads better than sanding sticks for this kind of a sanding, because it does conform to the curve, so you're less likely to lose that curve. And I don't spend a ton of time on sanding. Some people like to sand longer than me, but I like to get things looking basically clean. I'm just checking for areas that might need a little extra. The other thing I like to do is sand the back of it and make it nice and smooth. And I do like a stiffer uh, sanding surface for this, so I'm using the sanding stick. And I'm rotating it around on it. And that's to give me a nice flat ledge that will attach to the back piece. And now I'm also going to sand this edge. And this edge doesn't need a ton of sanding because I'm also going to surround it with a coil frame. But I do want to get it nice and smooth so that when I do attach that frame, it's going to um, attach all the way around smoothly without any gaps. And now I'm going to attach my lovely little Celtic dragon to my base piece. And to do that, I'm going to very generously wet the inside of this, especially around the edge. But I wet the whole thing. It doesn't hurt it to wet it. And I want it generous because I want to be able to move it around until I get it positioned. And I get it on there and I just sort of wiggle it slightly until it grabs. And make sure I have the dragon oriented properly. The next step is to create my frame with the built-in bail. So um, to do the bail, I like to form it over 
uh, anything to hold the shape of the bale. You could use a toothpick. This is a piece of a skewer. You can also use a coffee stirrer. I do like to lubricate it. So I'm just going to rub some lube on it. I'm going to actually use this. This is a good size for um, the size bale I like to make. And again, your bale is going to depend on what you want to hang it on. If you want to hang it on a very wide chain, you're going to want to make a bigger bale. And if you want to do beading wire, you're going to need a smaller bale. So you want to make your bale according to what you're going to hang it on. So I'm going to start with a fairly uh, moderate size uh, piece of clay. And I want to handle it as little as possible with my hands and get right into the coil roller. Now the secrets of successful coil rolling are always start with fresh clay or freshly reconstituted clay. Don't take more clay than you need. I find that that's a, a mistake my students make often. Work as quickly as you can because the longer you take to roll your coil, the more dry it's going to get. And after you get the coil rolled, wet it immediately. And when you wet it, wet it with good clean water. You want to wet it on top and bottom. And I usually will pick it up with my brush. And I want the two ends positioned at the top because I'm going to make um, a two, I'm going to use both ends for the bale, but I do want it centered. So by keeping the coil nice and moist, I can move it around and it's going to slide and not grab. So I'm just going to brush this along. Now it's not completely centered, but what I can do is trim it. So these are even. And I like to taper them when I trim them. And now I'm going to bring in my little um, lubricated um, stick. And again, I want these centered at the top of the piece. And I'll just bring this around the top. And I want it to touch, okay, because I want that to bond. And the final step for that is to take a little ball of clay that's quite a little too big. I'm just going to trim a tiny bit off. And I'm going to dip that in the water and place it right there lube my finger and press that down and that'll finish off that bale nicely. So there's my finished piece. So we'll dry it, do a, see if it needs a final sanding. We'll pull the stick out before we fire it and then it will be fired and finished. So we, here we have our beautiful finished dragon pendant. Look how great that cobblestone design looks behind the, grant, um, looks behind the dragon. Um, I think it's a perfect setting for the dragon. And the thing that's really cool about this is you can mix it up any way you want. You can use any texture you want, any mold you want, and make a thousand variations on this design. And I just want to show you how nicely the back looks with the texture on it. This has been fired, polished, patinaed, and brought to a satin finish. Again, you can make this in a variety of ways. I hope you have a lot of fun making this project. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.